five human senses and our five basic taste sensations. So this is what we're going to be talking about here. How do we experience coffee? Well, naturally we can see it. If it's a beautiful cup of coffee, that's pleasurable. We can smell it. Smell is really important. Of course, we can taste it. Maybe hearing things or the general ambiance of a conversation or a coffee shop lends itself to the experience of coffee. And then certainly touch the temperature, the tactile sensation of that steamed milk in your latte. All of these five senses go into the experience of coffee. So um, what about uh, taste and smell specifically? Let's really dial into taste and smell. So again, I said there are five basic tastes. Now let's look at those in more detail. There's a fancy word we call for eating things or swallowing things, and that's gustation. Now, gustation creates this kind of uh, flow of air down and then back up because we're breathing and we're swallowing. And uh, the process of then smelling and uh, translating those signals with our nervous system is olfaction. So olfaction is very much to do with the sensory perception of smell and aroma. And then gustation is very much the, the perception of taste and swallowing and the, kind of that, what happens in the mouth more than in the nose as we call it. So olfaction and gustation, two kind of specialized words that we will use here and we can use because this is the specialty coffee introduction. So when we were kids, we used to take food in and, you know, maybe we had to eat something. Mom said, you got to finish your broccoli or your Brussels sprouts until you can go outside and play with your friends. So what would you do? You plug your nose and you eat your food, right? You plug your nose because you actually cut off a major sense of sensory perception, a major sense of um, what that aroma and taste actually is. And so you can't really stop your tongue from working unless you swallow the food without chewing it. That's not advised. But uh, that perception through your nose is super, super critical, and especially when it comes to coffee. So if you look at the coffee flavor wheel, um, especially the, the original flavor wheel, I really like this original flavor wheel because it's divided between taste and aromas. And on the coffee wheel, they only identify four tastes, but you will see that they are sour, sweet, salt, and bitter. Okay? Sour, sweet, salt, and bitter. And then on the other side is aromas. And aromas are what we're perceiving with the olfactory bulb and uh, smelling, whereas our tastes are actually what is uh, being chemically translated through our tongue and our taste buds and the sensations that we have in our mouth. And so our tastes are actually very primal. They're very simple. Sweet, sour, salt, bitter. All right, so it doesn't take much to say that the dominant flavor in fruit, especially a banana, is sweet. Now, we don't just isolate that. Only inside of a banana is sweetness, but that's the dominant flavor, right? Coffee has sweetness because coffee is a fruit. Salt. We all know what salt is. This is some Himalayan sea salt, and salt has a different sensation. Sweet is often immediately perceived. It makes us happy. It's very much on the front, an immediate sensation, um, although you can sense it everywhere in your tongue. Salt is, as we progress back, we uh, also perceive salt and it's also pleasurable but not too much salt because too much salt um, actually is uh, a little bit painful right the body signals that this is not good for me and then sour okay so sour then moves us on just like if you ate a lime or a lemon you get this sensation on the sides of your tongue you salivate so anything that's sour um, or, or rather, some things that are sour are quite good, like fruit. Fruit has a lot of acidity. Coffee has a lot of acidity, especially specialty coffee that's grown in high elevations that's not dark roasted and burnt. 
So this acidity in fruit can be a very good thing and it harmonizes with the sugars. Sour and sweet together make something very beautiful, just like a good glass of lemonade. However, sour can also be something that happens to like milk when it goes bad or some certain foods that go bad or yeast like a sourdough bread. So certain amounts or types of sour sensation could signal to the body this is dangerous. And then as you continue moving back and uh, you know one of the most sensitive, it is the most sensitive aspect of our tongue is bitterness. So just like if you had a dry um, or dark cocoa, you know cocoa will be very bitter until it's blended with milk and sugar and all of the emulsifiers that make it into chocolate. But coffee is also very bitter. Coffee gets its bitterness from caffeine. Caffeine is a drug and it's also inside of that coffee plant, it's inside of the leaves, it's inside of the fruit and the bean because animals don't like to eat bitterness. So the animals, if given the choice between a tasty banana and a banana tree that is sweet or a bitter coffee tree and bitter fruit, uh, they will choose the sweet fruit. And so uh, it's actually a defense mechanism for the tree because if given the choice between something bitter and something sweet, as a child, you would never, as an insect, you would never choose the bitterness, you would choose the sweetness. Now there is a fifth sensation that our tongues can perceive. Again, we're talking about tongue sensations, tastes, and that would be umami, something that you would get in like a roasted seaweed or an instant noodle pack. Uh, umami is a very interesting sensation. It's kind of like the sweet, salty, seaweed, bone broth, a savory aspect. And umami is a Japanese word. So it has to do with that uh, savory quality. So in specialty coffee, how does this all apply? Well, we're gonna be looking at the coffee tasters wheel, the flavor wheel, and we're gonna be trying to understand how sweet, how sour, acidic, how salty, if at all, how bitter is this coffee? We need to be able to perceive these things. Seldom, if ever, do we perceive umami. Uh, that's, you know, it's still under investigation actually by professionals. But we should not perceive saltiness. Saltiness in coffee may be present in some Robusta coffees, but if it's in a Arabica coffee, it's probably a processing impact or a processing error defect even. There should be sweetness. Absolutely, specialty coffee must have sugars. High sugar content is one of the trademark specialties of great coffee. And you don't think of coffee as being sweet, traditionally just because coffee was so dark roasted and it was so bitter. Certainly there will be bitterness in coffee, especially if it has caffeine, uh, it will be bitter. But the goal is that you're bringing up the sweetness, you're bringing up the acidity, and you're bringing up the other characteristics of this coffee to be in balance and harmony and even to overtake the bitterness because bitterness is just generally not a desirable quality but bitterness in balance is a beautiful thing because uh, the bitterness in caffeine is not per se bad as long as you don't consume too many cups of caffeine then uh, you know some of the research says that it's even beneficial for you we all know that we love caffeine in certain quantities. Now bitterness can also come from dark roasting. I think that I said that. So if you have a light roasted coffee and um, if it's Arabica, it's not going to have as much caffeine. So you shouldn't have an overpowering sense of bitterness. Now as we explore more coffees and as we continue into the exercises, you should be able to perceive, is this sweet? Yes, there is sweetness. How much acidity and sourness am I perceiving? Okay, how about uh, saltiness? Is there any saltiness? Maybe that's coming from my water. Maybe something else went wrong. Um, this coffee should not be salty. How bitter is this? And is it in balance? All of these things taken together will help us as we try to learn how to use a specialty coffee association cupping form and putting those elements together in that way to score a coffee.